thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to my talk. I'm very excited to talk to you today about my favorite topic, which is graphs, and apparently Berlin Buzzword's favorite topic, which is streams. So, yeah, stream all the things. All this conference is about streaming. Uh, if you look at the accepted talks, at least 10 of them have the word stream or streaming in their titles. Uh, and I don't think that's uh, a coincidence. We have very good streaming technology out there. We can do amazing things. Um, we have very low latency. We have systems that give us very high throughput, good fault tolerance guarantees, very nice APIs. Um, the whole ecosystem is, is thriving, really. And not only we have these good systems, but also users are um, very good at shifting their mindset uh, very fast from a batch way of thinking to a streaming way of thinking. So we can already do more than just counting words. We can already do complex event, uh, event processing. We can already do um, online machine learning. We can even do streaming SQL. I mean, this is a very exciting time. Um, but what I want to share with you today is my thoughts on why, even though we can do all of this amazing stuff, um, why are we still stuck in the past when it comes to graph processing? What about graph processing? Graphs are very dynamic. All of the uh, applications we have, uh, social networks, purchases, uh, ratings, everything is things, events that happen in real time. However, we don't have any uh, libraries for graph streaming, right? Why, why is that? Um, so far, we've been doing graph processing in a very specific way. We usually have uh, a graph stored in disk. We bring it into memory. We load it into several machines, like probably partitioned. Then we do some processing. We compute and change the graph structure or the values of the vertices. And then after the processing is done, we go back and store it to disk and read the result. This is, this is the way we do graph processing today. Um, well, if all you need is to analyze a static graph over and over again, this model is great, right? I have no problem with that. But if you want to do something more interesting, like, for example, see how uh, page rank changes uh, when your graph changes or how you, your graph might be disconnected if uh, you know, a user deletes uh, their account or something like that, then with this model that we have today, we have to redo, to redo the whole computation. So what we have today is slow. You have to wait for the whole processing to finish before you can see any result. It's expensive because you have to do partitioning and you have to replicate in, uh, probably to uh, minimize the communication between machines. Uh, it has been shown that it's many times much more expensive and uh, resource-hungry than if you would run the same thing on a laptop. And, um, well, if your graph changes, you have to recompute everything. So this is a very, very bad model for dynamic uh, graphs. Um, and, of course, graph streaming is not, it's not an easy thing. That's why we don't have anything yet. So there are many challenges uh, that don't appear in other areas of streaming applications. First, we have to uh, maintain somehow this graph structure, because in the core of graph applications are the graphs themselves. We need to know what are the neighbors of its vertex, we need to know the paths, we need to traverse the graph, right? So we need to somehow efficiently maintain this structure somewhere. Um, then we need to maintain up-to-date results uh, when, when the input changes, and we need to compute on, on fresh state only. So in streaming applications, usually we are uh, interested in the, in the latest state. So how do we maintain this dynamic graph um, in memory at all times so we can compute our streaming applications? Well, what if I told you you don't need to store the graph to analyze a graph? You don't need the structure of the graph to get useful metrics uh, from a graph, right? This is, this is different from what we've doing so far, but it's possible. Uh, and it's not a new idea. It's something that uh, was actually introduced 20 years ago, or even earlier, in a quite different context. So graph streaming is a concept 
um, developed in academia uh, to solve a quite different problem from what we have today, but I think we can learn something from it. Uh, so the problem they were trying to solve then was that we have a very big graph that does not fit in our limited memory. It does fit in disk, but we can probably stream it through memory, maybe several times, not too many, only a few passes we allow, and then try to compute something over this, this stream and, and give a result. Um, so, um, a core component of this model is graph summaries. The idea here is that if you have a huge graph and you have an algorithm that you need to run on this graph to get some result, um, if, you, if you stream it through memory, maybe you can keep part of it, like a summary of it, some compact representation that will, will fit in your limited memory. Maybe change your algorithm a bit and then get the same or a similar result to what you would get if you would run your algorithm on the, on the big graph. And some um, examples of these summaries are spanners for um, computing if, the, if a graph is connected uh, and to um, compute distances between uh, any two vertices. Sparsifiers is another summary to estimate cuts in the graph. You, we have neighborhood sketches and all other kinds of things that have been developed over the years. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have time to give you examples for all of this, since this is a short slot, but I will give you an example of a simple summary um, in the word count of graph processing. So, are you familiar with connected components? Yes? Okay, some of you. <laughs> so, okay, the problem is the following. We have a graph and we want to compute um, the, the connected components of the graph. The con a connected component is a subgraph of the original graph where there is a path between any two vertices. So, for example, here, this is a connected component, be component because you can go from any vertex to any other vertex, and that's a different one, right? So, the way we do this in a batch way is that we assign a label to its vertex, and then we iterate over the graph, and in every iteration, a vertex sends messages to its neighbors and says, this is my label. And then when a vertex receives the messages, it picks the minimum one. So, after a few iterations, the, vert the labels propagate in the component, and in the end, they will, uh, all the vertices belonging to the same component will have the same label. So, for example, these messages will go around in iteration zero. In iteration one, some of the vertices will change their values. Again, we send around messages, and so on. We continue until all the vertices inside the same component have the same label. Right? This is how we do it in a batch way. Now, what if I... Uh, told you that we can do this without iterations and without ever storing the graph in memory. We don't need to know who's neighbor with whom. We only need to keep the right graph summary, in this case, a disjoint set or union find, if you, if you want. And we only need to store the component IDs and what vertices belong in that component. We don't need to store the whole graph, the edges and everything else. So let's see how this would work. We have a stream of edges coming. We get the first edge, one, three. We haven't seen it before, so we create a new component with these two vertices inside the component. We get the second edge, two, five. We, it doesn't exist in an existing component, so we create a new one, and we uh, always choose the ID, the minimum of the vertices inside the component. Four, five. Five exists already in component two, so we just add four over there. Six, seven, we check our uh, existing components, nothing is there, so we create a new one. Six, eight, we'll put eight in the component six. Two, four does nothing because we already have this information, so we can throw the edge away. Three, four, three belongs to component one and four belongs to component two, so we now know that there is an edge between some uh, vertices in these two, and we can merge these two components into one, picking again the minimum component ID. And we continue like this, right, without needing to, to store the graph ever. And of course, we can do this in a distributed way as well. So we can have several streams going to different partitions or different, different nodes, 
uh, computing local summaries and then periodically merge into a, a single stream where we get our result. So that's an algorithm that was developed really long ago, but we somehow forgot about it and we started doing it the bad way. Um, the bad news about all this research uh, 20 years ago is that um, it had a slightly different motivation than what we really need today. So the problem they were trying to solve uh, was assuming a, a bounded graph. It was assuming that we have a graph, it's too big, but it's not endless, like the streams we assume today. So what we need today is a bit different in a sense that um, we want to continuously process something, continuously changing, probably forever. Um, the second problem is that since um, this research assumes that the graph is bounded. Um, some of the algorithms developed assume that we know the number of vertices or the number of edges. And the last problem is that most of these algorithms developed back then uh, were developed for single-threaded execution. The good news is that we live in a different reality than 20 years ago. So memory is getting bigger and it's getting cheaper and we know now how to design distributed algorithms. So um, the idea is, what if we get inspired by that research and try to relax maybe the assumptions that they had, maybe not create so strict summaries, uh, and try to evolve these algorithms uh, to bring them to the setting that we have today and the needs and requirements that we have today. And that's what I'm trying to do with a colleague of mine uh, at KTH in Stockholm. We have built a um, graph streaming prototype on top of Apache Flink called JellyStream. Um, so uh, if you're familiar with Flink, if you went to any of the talks, uh, Flink has two APIs, one for batch, one for streaming. So for the batch API, uh, we have a graph processing API called Jelly for static graphs and iterative algorithms and all of this. So what the, uh, Jelly Stream would be um, is a, an API on top of the streaming API of Flink for dynamic graphs, uh, single pass algorithms, uh, using summaries and probably giving you approximate uh, computations. So, sorry, that. <laughs> so yeah, the the streaming connected components that we saw before in a distributed setting, um, we could implement it in the streaming API of Link very simply. Like this, we have an edge stream, a stream of edges, basically. Uh, first, we just partition the edge stream. Well, here I just partitioned by the source ID, but you could partition in a, a smarter way if you want to. So we send different edges to different partitions. And then we define um, every how much time do we need the merge to happen with a, with a time window uh, in Flink. And then we need to provide uh, how to do the merge. So when you receive an edge and you have your local summary, how do you merge this edge to your local summary? Basically, what I showed before, that if I haven't seen the edge before, you create a new component, or if it uh, connects to different ones, you have to merge them. So this is what the UDF there would do. And then you need to <coughs> define how would you merge the local states into a global uh, state. Um, actually, with, with the API we have built, you don't even need to do all of this because uh, first we have uh, built several algorithms that you can uh, use yourself uh, just by calling the library method. So except from connected components, you can also do bipartiteness check, uh, some triangle count uh, estimation or window triangle count and some other continuous aggregates. And we also have um, more high-level abstractions. So the, uh, this format of the uh, algorithm that we saw, that you have local uh, states and then you merge them periodically, we have seen them in other algorithms as a pattern. So we offer an abstraction to build this kind of algorithms more easily. Um, so if you liked uh, what I presented today, you feel free to check the repository. This is not part of, of Apache Flink. Uh, it's, as I said, an experimental API. It's our vision to make people uh, stop thinking like vertices and start thinking like, I don't know, in a more modern streaming way. Um, I have also collected uh, 
a list of graph streaming papers if you're interested in this area and you want to see what has happened uh, and what algorithms you can implement in this model. And there is a related talk that uh, me and my colleague gave at FOSDEM. Uh, it's, more, um, it's an extended, extended version of this one. It has more, uh, more examples if you want to check it out. Thank you very much. Thank you, Asya. Do we have any questions? Please. <laughs> any more questions? No, now you have to ask something about graphs. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just more like a suggestion. So sure. uh, when the Hadoop started, so this batch processing, there was always also a lot of ideas in Cloud Air specifically how to handle these graph problems in the batch world. Mm -hmm. And I think like there was also this page rank, how you could do page rank in MapReduce, and so it probably could take something from their experience in this area. So. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, this is the same thing, right? I'm trying to use the technology we have today to bring the problems uh, like up to date and, and make use of the tools we have. Exactly, it's the same thing, sure. Thank you. Any more questions? Okay. Sure. <laughs> Okay, e either you didn't get anything or you got everything. <laughs> no? No more? Yeah, you? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Um, Who? So, uh, I have... Uh, uh, sure. Here. Uh, my, my intuition would tell me that if you do streaming processing of graphs, you assume that the processing is a kind of linear. So linear? Uh, you, you mean the complexity? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, what about the problems that rec that are would that are theoretically pol polynomial or exponential? Yeah, it's How not necessarily. How would you solve it in a streaming uh, mode? Sure, it's not necessarily linear processing, and not all problems are uh, possible in this model. Of course, uh, the idea here is more that you can change the algorithm a bit, or you can approximate the result. So, for connected components, uh, that was an easy example what I showed, and you get an exact result. You get the same result as you would get with batch. But uh, other algorithms like page rank or distances and these kind of things, they would give you errors in the end. So you don't compute the exact same thing as you would compute with batch processing, but sometimes it's good enough, right? Um, and because you compute on the summary, so you don't have all the information that you would have on the, on the big graph. Sure. We have time to take one more question. Awesome. Just gonna be there and not Jeffy. Okay, so you were shy. <laughs> Hi. Uh, my question is do these algorithms also work if you think about removing edges or removing vertices from the graph? Yeah, that's a very good question. So, uh, edge additions are easy. Most of these, the algorithms that have been developed are about edge additions, but there are also algorithms for edge deletions where you usually uh, have the original graph somehow, uh, somewhere stored, and then you update the summary in real time, and then you just query the summary. But um, this is what I meant by relaxing the assumptions that uh, used to exist, because now uh, we don't have such limited memory or this kind of uh, boundaries that we used to have then, so you can do these things more easily than you could back then. Yeah, but uh, yeah, they're more, more complex, the deletions, for sure. <laughs> But also, they're, more, uh, uh, they're not so uh, usual as the additions, usually, yeah. Last chance? No? Last call? Okay, you can always catch me up later. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs>